guys, Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice, and welcome back to the channel's version of A Crafty Corner. Happy Sunday, guys. I hope everyone's doing well. And as you can see, I do not have a prototype of any type in front of me. We are going to be doing a step-by-step, in-depth look at creating a journal using a PVA water-based glue. And yes, I understand we talked about glue in the last ephemera video that went up, but we are going to recover that just a little bit more today, simply because I want to show you some of the very, very basic products that I personally use in order to um, create covers and are buying books and they still hold up or they have held up as far as I know anyway. So, um, in the PVA world, last time, we looked at Elmer's School Glue. Elmer's is a brand, um, a, a, a manufacturer here that produces different types of glue. Um, they are known for their school-based glue, which is non-toxic and safe. It just happens to be not the only school or glue that targets the school grade market, but it's one of the bigger brands or labels here in the United States. So they make a different variety of glues. Each one that you see here is a water-based glue that, um, that is known as a PVA glue, which is non-toxic, again, dries, clear and fast, and completely safe. Now, these glues are great with the exception of they do carry a reputation, especially in book binding for being weak. And they can tend to release whatever you're using to bind them or um, create with them um, over a period of time. Again, I haven't experienced it as of yet in a lot of the uh, creations that I make with a water-based glue um, are reinforced with sewing. Um, so I'm not sure if that is what's preventing them from falling apart. With, with that being said, um, I haven't experienced, experienced much. So for this particular video, I wanted to take it even more basic. I went to my local Walmart. Now, if you do not know, Walmart is a big box store here in the United States. Um, um, alongside its competitors like uh, Target. Um, let's see, what else would be in that realm? Or well, Walmart and Target are the major two. There are many, many other stores um, that you can go in along that those calibers across the United States, and I'm sure in other countries as well. So I wanted to get the most basic PVA glue, school grade glue that I could find. Both of these together cost about a uh, dollar and ten cent here in the United States. I'm not sure what they would equate to in any other country but the um, four fluid ounce glue glue PVA, and this is a, one of Walmart's house brands, um, Pen Plus Gear or Penning Gear. I think it's Pen Plus Gear. Um, this was 64 cent and the stick came in a pack of three for like maybe $2.50. So very economical brand, very affordable, but it's the exact same formulation as Elmer's School Washable Glue. Not the other ones, but this particular one per se. Um, and the regular one of this one, they're pretty much the same, just different branding. So that's what we're going to be used as we create today. Now, with all of this said, what are we creating? I was given a handkerchief, which is why I don't have a prototype. I only have one. <laughs> I was given a handkerchief and asked, challenged, however you want to put it, to make a journal from it. And I accepted. And at the time that I accepted, I did not um, really give thought to the fact that I had accepted a, uh, a challenge to work with polyester fabric, which even in my sewing ventures is not not my favorite fa favorite fabric to work with but we are going to make this work so this is what we are going to be making a journal from today um i decided i want to make a little black book for myself or maybe even to give away i don't know yet so i want to cut the 
handkerchief in half. I'll reserve that pattern side for a later project. And I'll take the solid and the striped side for creating the journal um, I'll make with you guys today. So I'm pretty sure I wanna cut that in half. What are we using as a base? Well, actually, first of all, with that fabric, I want to, because we're gonna be using PVA glue and it is a water-based glue, it will seep through fabric and show through fabric. Um, and I would really like for this to have a little bit more stability to it. So I am actually going to be fusing this with interfacing. Um, this is just a piece of interfacing I cut off my roll. But uh, after I cut it in half, I'm going to fuse the piece that we'll be using for the journal to a piece of interfacing. That's going to give it strength, make it durable. Um, and give it the protection it'll need for me to use um, water-based glues without it seeping through the fabric. Um, so that's the main point of it. All right, so base. For the base, yes, we are, I'm using a, a vegetable spread stick box. This is a blue bonnet box. Um, it is margarine. It's not butter, it's margarine sticks, um, which we've used and cooked already. So I'm just gonna be breaking this box down in order to use it to create a journal. Um, if you decide to follow along, you can grab whatever fabric you may have on hand um, that you wanna make a journal out of, I've been saving, um, whatever base you are gonna be using, whatever type of box, and remember you can use Cereal boxes, cake mix boxes, anything that's made from chipboard. Um, you can create your own base from uh, like cardstock or Bristol board. So many different avenues you can go down, which we've seen a lot of them on the channel so far. So I'm gonna use this food packaging box and then I'm gonna be doing some reinforcing. So the first thing we need to do is break down this box. So I'm just going to open it up here. Try not to tear it up. Okay. And open it on this side. Again, try not to tear it. And then there we have it. We have a front, a back, and a spine. So that's what we're going to be using. So first things first, I need to trim all of the excess edges off. I'm going to be keeping one piece to use to reinforce the spine. Maybe even two pieces to use to reinforce the spine. Uh, so I'll cut this down. I am going to cut the handkerchief in half and then fuse it to the interfacing and we'll come right back here i have my fabric which i have fused to the interfacing now if you don't have interfacing i just so happen to have it because i do sew clothing and i had some in my backstash now this is not something i suggest that you go out and buy there are many different ways you can achieve this uh effect um you can fuse it to a cereal liner. You can fuse it to uh, maybe like a waxed paper. Um, you can fuse it to regular paper by simply using a fabric glue to glue it onto um, like maybe a regular sheet of printer paper. So there are many different ways that you can add some stiffness and pliability to a really thin fabric as well as keep whatever adhesive you're using from seeping through to the front of the glue, uh, front of your fabric, which can stain your project. So that's what we're trying to prevent um, with that. Now I cut the car stock down as well, or should I say the um, margarine box down. Now this honestly is kind of the, a weird size for a journal, but I'm gonna roll with it. Um, I don't have one this size. Um, actually, I might gift it to the person who gave me the challenge. So, uh, But if I use it, I think it's probably like a pretty decent size for me to use watercolor pencils in. I don't have a journal that's specifically geared towards watercolor pencils. So 
Uh, we'll see as we go along, but the first thing I need to do is back this or reinforce. Although it is chipboard and it's a little bit heavier than like your regular card stock that you get, um, I still feel like I need to add a little reinforcement to it. So I'm going to use a regular piece of card stock and I'm just going to be gluing it down to the front to cover all of the writing um, and to give the base a little bit more stability. So I am just going to use my glue book and I'm going to be using that pen plus the gear glue stick because this is the most economical PVA glue I could find. I really wanted to use that for, to show you that I'm using a really, really, really thrifty glue in order to create these projects. And there are so many different ways to get it to hold. Now, I would never suggest you use just a glue stick by itself, whether it is Elmer's or a generic brand like this. Um, I know there's one called Uhu, I think, U-H-U, uh, -U, and I've actually seen many crafters use it. And yes, I'm using a lot of glue, a lot of glue. Um, I've seen many crafters use it, but I am familiar with glue sticks in general, and they just do not hold well enough nor long enough to use solo in a project. So I'm also going to be using some of this liquid glue around the edges. Oh, this is really watery. This is really watery, which is good. This is fine. This will probably be wonderful when I'm creating like my faux papers um, because I add water to PVA glue in order to make that mixture anyway. So this is probably going to be wonderful in that aspect. It will come out of the bottle, I'll tell you that. So I'm just going to cover that. Then I'm going to use my finger and kind of go along and spread that glue out, making it level. Getting our way to the edge. Slide it up a little bit. And yes, I left this real time, guys. I left this real time. Okay, so we're just going to get all of that evened out. And then I'll move that over to car stock. Let's see here. We are just going to press it down really, really well. Now, what you would want to do at this point is to lay this under something and give it time to dry. Once it dries completely, we can move into continuing the reinforcement because this is not all I'm going to do. But I do want to make sure that this here down really, really well. And then we're going to press this under something heavy for just a while. Um, and then we'll cut that out. While we're waiting on our base to dry, I thought I would take time and share with you guys a few other covers that I have created using PVA glue or school grade glue. These are covers that have been created over a period of time as I've been creating journals and as my uh, journal creating um, and methods have evolved. So the very first fabric journal I ever created was this one. It's made from an old t-shirt actually. Um, I've already completed covering the inside. It's just, it needs to be bound. And then all the tucks and tips and molds and things. I need to finish the cover. Or maybe I'll leave it that way. Put a, some type of closure on it. It still has some work to go. And it's funny. It was the first one I, I did. And I'm still... Um, I have journals that I've completed long after that. Uh, here is one that is made from... Um, fabric that I got from I think Joann's. It's like one of those fabric off cuts. It's like the New Orleans Saints. Um, one of my friend's favorite football teams. So I started to work on that journal uh, for that friend of mine. So that's the one that I'm going to be working on completing. 
and who knows maybe some of these journals will end up with tutorials as they're completed now here is a collage journal i did from book pages from a kid's book um it has muslin on it that has been uh watercolor dyed actually in order to match the pages i mean the um the covering of the book and it was done collage style now this one has also been finished on the inside and it's ready to be bound so i just have a little work to do in that aspect and i'm going to use that as the cover for the journal um i purposely collaged it that way i thought it was really cute so that's that one and then we had this is probably the fa my favorite one i love this one i love the color scheme um this was done from pattern paper from a um one of the pattern paper packs that i bought um the inside is actually muslin that i dyed with watercolor and metallic watercolors um and then sealed so that's that one and it's ready to be bound as well so i can start working on that one here's one that i made from bristol board this one definitely needs some more work it's already been covered on the inside but um i started to experience an issue with um the uh the uh oh lord what is this this part <laughs> the journal <laughs> where you bind it in uh to the journal why can't i think of that word oh my god i have such a brain but it's starting to fray and i need to figure out a solution um to fix that or just scrap um this particular type all together but we'll see uh, maybe I'll put washi tape on it. Here's one that was created from um, spine. Spine, that's the word, Lord, help me. Um, this is pattern paper that I created from dyeing watercolor. I mean, dyeing uh, printer paper with watercolor and then splattering. Uh, the cover is created from like a, a book page that has some of my artwork printed on it. Um, and then dragonfly clear stickers, and then it's been laminated. It's really, I thought it was really cute. And then some of the fabric from the very first fabric journal I'd ever created was used um, to accent this one. Um, here's the inside, it's still a work in progress, but I just want to show you guys some of the journal covers that I have created from using a PVA type glue. You don't have to use them both at the same time. I do, but you don't have to. You can use, I mean, if you're going to just use one, I would suggest this one, but never. I would never just use a school glue by itself. I use them in combination or in a trio with someone. Um, this one was created back during, what was it, St. Patrick's Day? Um, I never got around to binding it. It was one that I was going to put on the Etsy shop, but unfortunately, I didn't get the Etsy shop up and running into after St. Patrick's Day, so I said I would just, you know, kind of save this one. But this one was done from a tile from the Dollar Tree, actually. They had these really cute tiles in there. And um, I grabbed one for 99 cents and brought it home and created a journal cover out of it. Um, so it has been finished. It's just ready to be bound. Again, PVA glue. And then last but not least, here's one that was created from some gel prints that I did. Um, the spine on the outside is covered with I want to say a t-shirt maybe yeah the off cut of a t-shirt the sleeve of a t-shirt um and as you can see it's still a work in progress as well got to finish up the inside but those are covers that have been created using pva glue i just want to give you guys a quick rundown and those are journals that i have to work on all of those will eventually be in the etsy shop at some point or another <laughs> or another or another don't know when another will be but yeah guys so we're gonna be right back with the um, completed or with the reinforced uh, base for this video. At this point, we are gonna go ahead and move on with the video. Now, my base is not completely dry, but it's dry enough. Now, I'm gonna take it and actually recrease where the folds are. Just so it'll be pliable. Um, now, we're going to go this way with it. 
I just wanted to crease that way. And there we'll have our book. Now, I wouldn't leave it like this. I guess if you wanted to, you could, but that's not the point of what we're doing today. So, we know that that was the front end. I'm not going to, I guess you could sew around this to reinforce it if you wanted to. Um, you could possibly use some staples in it at this point since we're going to be covering all of this. Um, that was just to give the base a little bit more stability. We are going to be adding fabric and then fabric strips on the spine to reinforce it even further. So um, I'm going to hold off because I'm going to sew around the entire end of it um, after I get the cover on. So at this point, what we want to do is cover the actual base with our fabric. And we've done this before with journals on the channel. So I know that I want the solid black side to be the front of my journal. Um, I don't guess it really matters how I put it on here. Um, considering the fact that there's no necessary up or down now, you want at least an inch, half an inch to an inch of allowance on each side. The fabric, which was much easier to cut down and handle with it fusing that interfacing on it. So now it's just a matter of gluing down. So I'm gonna start with the spine area and I'm still gonna use my glue stick. I didn't grab my glue book, that's okay. We'll make it work anyway. I'm just gonna glue down the spine and we're gonna be wrapping it, so. But I do want to make sure that the base adheres to the fabric. And I'm just going to smooth that out. Okay, got a paper towel here to wipe my finger with. We got gluey fingers, you will have gluey fingers. Let's see if we can line it up right in the middle or about the middle. About there. There we go. Yep. And we'll just let that grab really quickly. Yes, yes. All right. Now, I guess you don't have to glue the rest of it. I am going to, um, you could just go ahead and wrap it if you wasn't, if you didn't feel too sure about the seepage, but that was another reason for the, um, the interface and the fusing was so that we wouldn't have to worry about the glue seeping through. Like I said, you don't have to use two glues. I'm using both of these. They're both the same brand, but I just want to, you know, feel a little secure about the fact that I am using this water-based glue. We're just gonna get this put on. Okay. We're gonna make sure we get all the way out to our edges. I'll lift that so I won't get it on the inside of the other panel. Here we go. Get that smoothed out like so. All right. And then we'll just lay that down like so. Look it over. Let's take a peek, We're looking good, looking good. And then we are going to do the opposite side. Now all of this is adding strength to the base and the spine. It's gonna make our journal durable. The glue helps, each layer of cardstock help. The fabric, the interface, and all of that is adding up to a really strong journal. 
So it's not something we're gonna to have to concern ourselves with. Whether or not the journal's gonna fall apart and then for it's all said and done, I'm gonna be uh, doing some sewing as well, just because I like to. And let me turn that around this way. That way I can lift it and spread that glue like we did on the opposite side. Being sure, again, to get all the way out to your edges. You want those edges to glue down really well. All right. Just gonna clean my finger up here. And then we will get this side pressed down. Okay. Let's just check the opposite side here. It looks like we are doing well. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I like that. Okay, let's see. And there's our spine, our front, and our back. The cover's gonna be nice. Let's go ahead and finish up here. So we're gonna wrap the base. I'm just gonna hit the corners. And I am gonna be putting panels on the inside of this and get a little dot of glue here in each of these corners. And we are just gonna let that catch on our four panels. Go ahead and finish wrapping these. We'll do one side at a time. Here, I have my entire journal wrapped um, to the inside. Right now I have clamps holding down the corners just be, to help that PVA glue grab a little bit better. Now it's a little sticky and I'm not really worried about the way the inside looks because we're gonna be covering that. If you flip it over, you see we have a beautifully covered journal cover there. It's gonna be a really nice base for us to do whatever we want. So for right now, what I wanna do is remove the clamps, lay this under something heavy, and let this completely dry before moving forward. The cover has had time to completely dry. Um, as you guys can see, I actually have a little warping in the front of that cover. Uh, and ironically enough, there's none in the back. So, I must have, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but we're not going to let that deter us, we're going to keep moving forward, I don't think it's too bad, so we need to work on the inside, so the first thing I want to do is, I think I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, and I'm going to do a zigzag stitch around, um, this is the fabric that I have chosen as far as covering the outside, just for some aesthetic appeal, because we do have the interfacing on the inside of that fabric. Uh, but I've also bonded a piece to the inside of this one just to help with seepage and to give it a little bit more strength to the, um, or there we go again, that part. <laughs> I do not know what is wrong with me. So I've cut out um, another piece of chipboard here which I'm going to be putting here just for a little bit more stability to the spine. Yeah, uh -huh, that part, the spine. And then we will be using this to cover. Now, I've cut a piece long enough. You can actually do this however you want. Um, you can forego adding the extra chipboard. I personally do it because I like to add more stability to the spine area. Um, and I know there's gonna be more than one signature in here, so I wanna make sure that it's extra strong. Uh, I've chosen fabric. You can choose um, paper. Just keep in mind that paper does have the tendency to crack over time. So I always use fabric, but that is absolutely your choice. Um, and I've cut it long enough so that I can start on the outside 
and it'll actually wrap completely around to the very bottom on the inside. But first things first, I need to do the sewing. So I'm gonna sew in a zigzag design around both this as well as this piece. Here we are, I've um, sewn around with like a decorative zigzag stitch around the entire cover. And I've also done it with the backing fabric for the spine. Now, um, I'll be honest, that sewing didn't come out exactly the way that I wanted to. Um, I have a skip stitch on the, what I'm using as the front of the book, unfortunately. But again, we're gonna keep rolling with the punches because um, I did not do a prototype. It is not like I can just backtrack. This is all I have, so I'm gonna have to use this and keep kicking. So I think what I wanna do is actually ink around this with black ink. Uh, but I think it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice. So let me grab some black ink. And I'm going to be using some Ranger Archival. Uh, this video is late coming out at this point. <laughs> it really is. Uh, I have been trying to get it out, but it will be out today, which is Sunday, which is the day that I'm working at this point. I previously started working on this video Saturday, or well, actually Friday, um, but the weekend really did get away from me. Right, this inked, I think that looks a lot better. Uh, now that that's inked, I am going to be adhering the extra backing piece to the spine. Just gonna grab. Yep, we are still working with school glue. Just gonna get some of that glue in there. I actually kind of like this glue stick. It's truth be told, it spreads better than um, other glue sticks that I've used. I still wouldn't trust it. Definitely not um, by itself. Now, I would typically use Fabrifix, but again, we are constructing this journal as promised from affordable, accessible glue to most people, which is school grade glue. Um, I don't really need to smooth that out. I'm gonna leave that there for its grabbing ability, and we are just going to set that inside there like so like that and I'm gonna grab some clamps so I want to adhere this or hold this down so it would adhere and I'm gonna give that a second to dry and then we'll wrap it with the fabric let us go ahead and move on because I would love to get this video up today. It's already going to take forever to upload with our internet. Um, it constantly drops in and out. I'm going to be trying to possibly look for a different internet provider. So let's see. I think that is it here well enough for us to move on. So now what I want to do is to wrap the spine, giving it even more reinforcement with another piece of fabric. It's gonna give some aesthetic design to the outside of the journal, um, as well as the inside. So um, it's very easy to see the spine here. Now, I need to be really careful um, because I do not want to get glue anywhere. I do not want to get glue. It's just that simple. Uh, so I'm only going to put the glue stick on the spine because I know the fabric is going to completely cover that area. And see, you guys see how that glue spreads? I actually like the way 
that glue stick spread. I wish other glue sticks spread that way. It spreads really easily. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Huh? And then I am going to add wet glue here. I want to make sure that there is a strong bun down the spine. Even if the pieces of fabric on the front and the back portions of the uh, journal should come up, that actually may be cute. I don't want the spine to move at all. And then keep in mind, we're also going to be have, have sewing going through the spine. So there's going to be plenty of reinforcement there. Holding all of that together. Um, so I'm going to set that to the side for a second. And then I am going to cover as much as the front portion of that was going to fit the front portion of the journal. Say here. Say about there. And I'm using lots of glue, as you guys can see. Because of the type of glue that I'm using, I want to be more than sure that we're holding and bonding and going to stay for as long as this glue will hold. But most of it has been reinforced with sewing, so not too, 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 too concerned. And then again, we are going to put down... I'm still gonna be very scarce with this glue. Um, I don't think it's gonna seep through because of the interfacing, but better safe than sorry, right? gonna have to let this press again so that is the front of our cover we need to get this halfway on so I'm gonna fold back those corners to meet bring it over drop it in the center of my spine get that the way I feel like it should be Center like so. I'm gonna hold that bottom, pull it straight and tight, and then just hopefully that's even and half and half. <laughs> hopefully, let's do a little quick test. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, we just need to get that to stick and stay. So I'm gonna make sure that I work that up to the very end of my journal. And then we, oop, I think I moved it, I did. Let's put it back. You do have plenty of time to reposition with this type of glue. All right, now I am going to clamp here And here, I always work with clamps when I'm working with the wet glue. It's, it's just what I, it's necessary in my opinion. So I really need to, I'm gonna remove those clamps for the moment. I really need to go ahead and wrap this completely around so that I can then lay it under something. Because you do wanna make sure that that folds to the mold like that. Wanna get both sides molded on really well. That's cute. All right, we're gonna open it up, flatten it out. We're gonna go ahead and wrap the inside of this as well. 
it's not completely straight, but that's okay. I think the it's enough. And as you can see, that glue did not see through. That is a wonderful thing. All right, let's get the inside wrapped pretty quickly so we can um, get this pressed and move on and move on. I'm so behind, guys. I am so behind. Ugh. Okay. Now, of course, don't normally go through this problem because why? I always have a prototype. I spent plenty of time working out how to get the journal done. Not the case with this one, as you know. But you are getting to see firsthand how they come to life on their own. Most journals design themselves anyway. It's just that after the first one designs itself, it's pretty easy to reproduce it over and over. I can get glue stick down this portion. I can see that without it being any issue. See about where I can go over with that. And if I go over too much, it's not gonna matter because the inside still is gonna be covered more. Just making sure I get plenty of glue down. We are going to go back and we are going to cover stuff with the quick glue as well. Just so we have a great bond. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Glue, 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 glue. Plenty of glue. Plenty of glue. And you know, I probably over glue. But, you know, that's my business. <laughs> if you glue less, that's your business. You know, I want to make sure that they're not going to fall apart. Especially when you're trying to run a business, right? Want to make sure that you have a product that doesn't fall apart. And if you guys see how I do it, you can feel pretty confident. That's just what I think. I don't know. I could be thinking wrong. We're going to smooth all that glue down. Make sure there's no lumps or humps or bumps of any type. We can cut all those threads off later. That's why I didn't really concern myself with it. All right, now we are just going to grab that fabric and wrap it on around to the inside, making sure to cover all of our glue spots. And bring it all the way down to the end of the book. We're gonna get it in those folds. Yeah, get it in there. I need to get the glue off my fingers. It's starting to rub on my fabric. And I don't care for that. Although I know it's gonna be covered, it's not the point. Now make sure you get down off of that groove of that spine really well. Let me grab a bone fold in there really good. I'm just gonna test it. There, looks like we're doing good. Let's turn it back to the front. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna press this, and it's what I would suggest anyone else do, that's using a wet glue. Make sure those creases are down really, really well. And then we are going to press this under something here. Yeah. I have given this time to do some drying. Um, and it's still lifting away. I don't think that the white glue is working well against the actual um, polyester fabric. Um, so I could leave this setting on something really heavy um, for about a day, 24 hours or so. But I actually need to go ahead and get this video finished as you guys know. So I am going to take a shortcut and I'm actually gonna put a straight stitch right down the seam of that zigzag 
on both sides, which should lock this fabric to the base. That way I can keep going um, and we can go ahead and finish up this already long video. So I have sewn that. We now have that, I'm sure, that's bound. As you can see, that glue is holding in that crease. And as I said, if you were to press it, give it about a day or so, um, it will probably be completely dry and adhered. I just have to move on, guys. I really do. So, um, now I want to decorate the front of the book. I'm going to keep it really simple since it's for a guy. I have a die cut um, of just like a little leaf emblem here. So I'm gonna set that there against that black background. And then I have sentiments um, from a little wording sheet. And I love the believe in yourself for this particular book. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna put the believe in yourself right there. We're gonna keep it really, really simple. Um, now let's fold this and see. I think that'll be. It. And then put the wording there. We'll have a closure. Maybe it should go in the middle. Let's see, do I like it better in the middle? Um, and the wording can still go there. Um, maybe somewhere in between the middle and the far left where I had it. But something of that nature. And yeah, I think that's going to be it. Pretty straightforward and simple. So I am going to here I think I want to stamp on this now that I think about it I want to stamp wording across that so it looks like wording so let me grab a stamp and I'm going to stamp this after I stamp a script stamp on it I'm going to go ahead and adhere it down to the front now I'm just not feeling using the PVA glue to do the front of this cover guys I'm going to be very honest um just because of the drying time. So I am going to switch over to Fabrifix in order to put down uh, the little decoration on front cover. Um, but that's all I'm gonna be using Fabrifix for, just there. Everything else has been, you know, white water-based school glue or white water-based PVA glue. Um, but this I am going to adhere with uh, Fabrifix just to be sure. So after adhering that, I went digging through stickers because you guys know I can't leave well enough alone. And I found these puffy stickers that I have that are um, like plant pots. I thought it'd be so cute for this one to go on the bottom of like the leaf arrangement. So I'm going to adhere this here. And there you have it, guys. That's pretty much the journal cover straightforward that was created from the um, polyester handkerchief that was given to me for a journal challenge. I have pretty much completed everything. The only thing I have to do is bind the book. Um, I'm actually going to lay panels down on the inside and then bind the book. But the cover itself is complete. Uh, kept the design on the front really simple just a die cut with a puffy sticker um, and a sentiment this is for uh, a young man so I did want to make sure not to get it too too feminine um, as I said I'm just going to cover the inside with a, probably some um, uh, pattern paper and then I'm going to put two signatures in the book and they're going to be constructed of um, college rule paper and copy paper, uh, printer paper, copy machine paper. Um, that way it'll be nothing but room to write so that he'll be able to journal his thoughts, ideas, um, recipes, whatever he choose to um, with nothing in the way because I know he's not going to be into all of the little tucks and folds and tricks that we uh, all of us other journalists normal normally are all right guys so there you have it i'm so sorry that this video was late for coming out number one number two i'm sorry that it's kind of sporadic and all over the place but i did want to get some content out for you guys um we worked from not having a prototype so it did it did make the video a little tedious but that's okay um hopefully you guys picked up on some tips tricks techniques 
um, throughout this video, some ideas that'll help you with your binding, help you with your journal construction, your cover construction, help you with securing and re reinforcing your um, spines for your journals that you create at home, which is probably um, one of the most important parts of creating or binding any book um if you saw anything you like don't forget to give the video a thumbs up go ahead and share the video remember that sharing is caring and there may be someone else out there who likes this information or needs to see it please if you like the content subscribe if you watch the videos and you like the content subscribe so that um you can be a member of the channel family hit the notification bell so you know when the new content come out in the video description you'll find a link for the thrifty apprentice facebook group paints pencils pastels and markers where we do everything everything uh artsy and crafty you'll find a link for the etsy shop just in case you guys ever see anything that you like um, maybe it'll end up on an etsy shop and you can take advantage of adding it to your collection if you choose to i would really appreciate any support if that's the route you choose to take um there's also a link for the most recommended um good to high quality but pocket and budget friendly products linked in the video description so please feel free to take uh, advantage of any of those um comment let me know what you guys think i really enjoy talking to you and remember as i tell you at the end of every single video just keep painting and crafting